Hi, happy Saturday. This is Teresa, and um, I thought I would do a quick unboxing of Stampin' Up! products uh, because I just got a new box of Stampin' Up! products. Today has been busy. The box came in from the post office probably about, oh, much earlier, but I have been very busy and haven't opened it until just now. Um, we had a birthday party. Well, first, I went over this morning for a garage sale and um, to help my daughter. And I was sitting there and I spotted um, a silky nighty with lace and applique on it. And I was like, I'll buy that from you. And then I sat and cut it up in front of her. So, um, that was fun. I've never made a junk journal with silk or satin or whatever it is before. So that should look really pretty. And then from the garage sale, we went to a kid's play place for my granddaughter. I had planned on having a birthday party there a month ago for her third birthday, but, um, my husband and I were sick, and so we were able to um, postpone the party till today and had um, five of my grandchildren there, and that was a lot of fun. Hadn't seen one of them for a while, so that was great, but of course, he gave Grandma a hug, and he was off and running, but at least he gave me a hug hello and a hug goodbye, and that's what counts. So... Of course, the three-year-old told me that she doesn't like kisses anymore, so um, gee whiz, we're already there. But anyways, um, got that done, came home, opened the box, and thought to myself, I should do a video, because I haven't done a video for a couple days, and I think that this would be a fun video, because it's um, a pre-order of new Stampin' Up! products that will become available in May. And um, then I've been doing some fun things with junk journaling. So let's go ahead and turn the other camera on and get started. I'm pretty sure I put the camera the right way this time. We don't want to see my skylight again. So um, actually, I, I must be in the wrong screen. Oh, my camera disconnected. That's what's happening here. It's like, wait, I only have one shot. There we go. There's the other one. And, ooh, I wonder if Switcher Studio changed the way that they do things. This is interesting. Hmm. I'm going to have to go on and see what we're doing here. Oops, better make sure my volume's not on. Good. It's not. I swear something looks different. Okay. I'm just fiddling around here. Because I'm used to what I usually see being on the other side. And... Maybe not quite so big. So we'll just give this a minute to see if you can see my desk. Because there's always a leg. Yeah, I'm, I think we're just seeing me still. Preview live. How about we do this?
Oh, it is just showing me for some reason. There we go. Okay, now we're cooking with Crisco. Okay, so, excuse the mess. It is quite a mess right now. Um, let's go ahead and look at the new products. So, I love punches, and I love circle punches. So here we have a two and three eighths inch punch. Up until this point, the largest punch that I had was two inches. So now I have a two and three eighths. And then I bought some more vellum. Whoops. <coughs> and some more cardstock. I've got some basic white and some very vanilla and vellum. And then I bought a lot of basic white. And then I bought the new ink colors for 2023-2025. And of course, I don't know what they're called yet. I don't have them memorized. So that's what I got for cardstock. Let's move that over here. And then I got this ribbon because it is pretty wide and it's pretty cool. It's kind of like corrugated cardboard is what it makes me think of. And it's called um, Frayed Ribbon 3 quarter inch. So there's about five yards of that. I'm going to put all the inks over here. Let's see. i got a lot of inks because there's new colors. So then I bought, let's see, so I always check this off as I go. I got the vellum, very vanilla, and then these are inks. We've got the ribbon, um, the punch. Okay, let's, let's look at this paper real quick. So this is a retiring paper this is Abigail Rose. Yeah, Abigail Rose. I love this paper. It even has some ledger sheets in it. These flowers are so fun to color. This is a favorite paper. And I used almost all of what I had from before. So I decided to buy another package of it before um, it goes away. And then this is a new color. And... Um, Let's go ahead and see if I have a scissors. I moved some things around because we're going to be taking our trip to Texas in a couple weeks. So I moved a bunch of my stuff into um, my craft bag. And I decided that I'm going to work out of my craft bag until we get back from Texas. So I'm just pulling my craft bag over by me. Grabbing my scissors. Let's take a look at this pretty paper. I'm sure that this will make a pretty journal. So we've got these two. Oh, this one has bunny on it. And then the other side, very pretty. That will look very nice. This one has doves on it. Mm, might be. 
might be like a partridge or something. That's kind of dark. That's pretty. That'll be fun. Could even be the journaling side. It would be really easy to write on that. This one has two kinds of foxes. One, two views of foxes. Fox, foxes. That's kind of dark. But it would be good for um, putting pockets on and stuff. I just drank a big bottle of water and I still feel like I need to cough. That's pretty. Okay, that is the paper. And that is called Countryside Inn. <coughs> Get rid of those. Check those off. Abigail Rose. And Countryside Inn Designer Series Paper. And something's tickling my nose. Oh boy. Okay, this is all from the Country Inn Suite Collection. It has an, an embossing folder right here. That makes this pretty design. Mm, and then we have Countryside Corners. And then the, um, the dies that go with it. And the dies are this shape. I don't know if they're stitched or not. Can you hear that? That's my husband on the motorcycle. Oh, nope, they're not stitched. But that'll be kind of cool to play with. I saw some pretty things in the catalog that I want to case. Case stands for ah, copy and oh my gosh. I can't remember. Okay, so these are all the 2023 20, New Core Color Collection of Stampin' Right Markers. And then I got the, um, they don't always come out with alcohol markers for all the new colors. This one is the Moody Mauve. And wild wheat. This is going to be really pretty. And bo boho blue. So that's what I got for alcohol markers. And then for singles, I got pebbled path, moody mauve, boho blue, and copper clay. Can't wait to give that one a try. Then I got the 2023 New Core Color Classic Stamp Pads. So in that is some that have recently retired and they brought them right back. Which is unfortunately, because I sold some of these recently. So, it has the Misty Moonlight. I just sold that. Lemon Lime. Berry Burst. I just sold all of these. Um, peacock. Ooh, it gave me two pretty peacocks. I wonder why. 
Huh. Lost Lagoon. I've never tried that. Fresh Freesia. I have the marker for that. Um, I believe they never finished coming out with a stamp pad when they first introduced it. Um, because they couldn't get a good stamp pad. So they must have resolved that issue. This is fun. Lemon... Lemon Lolly. That looks like that's a gorgeous. This is the one I was really looking forward to trying. This is Pecan Pie. So, um, Soft Suede is retiring. So, I may replace this as my go to for inking for junk journaling. Blueberry Bushel. I've had that one before. And Azure Afternoon. So,. I was really disappointed when I saw all these colors come back and I had just sold them last, let's see, it was sometime before December. So somebody got a heck of a good deal on inks and I ended up having to spend a pretty penny, penny on um, refurbishing my ink, but I, I just don't understand why I have two pretty peacocks. That is kind of weird have to look into that. So great, where am I going to put all these inks now? I'll figure it out. Trust me. <coughs> Ooh, this is some good chipboard. Okay, I think that is everything. Let's see. We've got the Wild Wheat, the Moody Mauve, Boho Blue, Basic White Cardstock, got three packages of that. The New Core Colors, the 2023-2025 Cardstock. Oh, New Core Colors, Stampin' Right Markers, and then the Pads. And then the Country In Suite Collection, which had the embossing folder, the stamp set, the um, dies and the designer series paper. And then we had Wild Wheat, Boho Blue, Moody Mauve, and Pebble Path. Okay, that's everything. Alrighty. Put that to the side. And See if I can move these a little bit further out of the way so I can show you what I've been busy with okay so one of the <coughs> excuse me one of the members of the scrimp and mommy um, ooh, it's warm in here scrimp and mommy Facebook group put this together, these three templates. She put this together and posted JPEGs in the group of these. So mine have check marks on them because I did all of these. I did prototypes of all of these because I thought this was a great idea. So then these are going to go in my idea book. So somehow, I guess I will fold these in half. It's funny how it's five o'clock and it's really, no, it's 6.30 by time. It's really gotten warm. And I'll just stick that in there for now. And then um, I'm gonna take a peek over here in my bag. would have been better if I would have pulled this out before I started, but hindsight, you know. Okay, this is what I was looking for right here. This was what I was working on last night. I've got a few new journals going on right now. Plus the other new journals that I haven't worked on, like my travel notebook. Um, it's upside down. 
So this I just started. It's work in progress. I decided to use one of these um, mailing envelopes as my cover and then I collaged it. So I haven't figured out how I want to collage this yet and exactly what my closure is going to be for this. But I really like uh, journals that fold over like this. So inside of here, this is the prototype for that those JPEG images that I just showed you. Now, I um, can't remember if this is one of them, but um, this is the Rolodex template freebie from the Scrimpin' Mommy Facebook group. So I printed that out, and this is the color that it prints out. And then I cut it out, and that's how I've got these corner tuck pockets. And this is all on her paper. These are her papers. Um, what is this from? I'm not sure what this is from. I can't remember right off the top of my head. And then just this is just a Stampin' Up envelope. So where where are those? Where did I put that? Okay, right here. See if we can follow along. Okay, so this is this one, only I've got it going the wrong way. Um, and then we have our corner tuck pockets, but I put them up and down like that instead of on two different pages. And then we have these. I don't know where the other one is, but there'll be two. Of, it's probably on this side. Yep, there it is. And then we have this one right here. So this has a pocket there and a pocket there. <coughs> and then we have these. So there's those. Oh, and this one, I spent quite a lot of time on trying to figure out how to fold that. So, whoops, no, it's not that one. Got ahead of myself. So that one is this right here. And I'm not really positive I did it right. I mean... It has a pocket here, like the picture shows, and a pocket here, and a pocket here. So it works the same way that the picture shows, but um, I wasn't sure how to get this glued right here. And my angles don't meet, so I just put a little staple there. And when I decorate it, I'll put something over that staple. So then we have this one right there. And this is two pockets. I just didn't put another tag in there. There we go. And then we have this one. I use the postcards for that one. Actually, so this one right here is this picture right there. And then this one I think is represented with this picture right here. <coughs> so that means there should be two pockets, and there are. 
Here's the other pocket. So then there's this one. And I think this is this one right here. So then I did, you know, hmm. Not sure. It's like I've got two envelopes. So I'm not sure what I did there. I didn't do anything on this page. And this one is that one right there. And I already talked about that one. I already talked about that one. Oh, this is the one that I spent a lot of time on. So here's the picture right here. I kept looking at that. So this is a tag, this is a tag, and this is a tag. And actually, I think that's a tag right there too now that I look at it closer. So I didn't notice that before. So I've got this tag, this tag, and this tag. But I don't have this tag. How would that fit in there? So it, it needs to fit up in there. This one was really hard for me to figure out how it got put together. That's why I have two of these. So this one I cut pieces off and glued them. And this one I folded this side in and this side in. So I, I could have made my other pocket if I would have seen that, but it must it must have been dark last night. I don't know, and I missed I missed that. And so then we have this is both of these are on this same page. So yeah, that was quite an adventure. Now I thought I didn't do these three here because I wasn't sure what to do. Oh, these are belly bands, but I don't know how to make that shape. So I skipped those, but I think these are belly bands. So I could do that right now. So let's just get it done because that's what I wanted to accomplish last night is to get it done. So I know we have a blank page here. Here's blank page right here. And what do we have for belly band material? Not really anything. See if we got any scraps that <coughs> are white enough. These will do. I will use these. Okay. They're not going the right way that I would want them to go, but that is what it is. Ooh, I'll use the music side. So put, I can never tell 
what's up and what's down with music. I'm thankful when there's words there. Even though that's not English. I don't think that's English. I want to trim this one down just a little bit. Okay, now blue. I did some of these. I actually did a double belly band like this in a journal that I just made. So it's good to keep looking back at your idea book so that you can remember the different possibilities of um, pockets. So now this is ready to be sewn in to my cover. I'll do the three three stitch, three stitch pamphlet stitch. I can never remember how to say that. <coughs> okay. So, I don't need any of this stuff right now. I got too much stuff on my desk. Alright, I wanted to do that and then better put my pin back in my glue. doing some catch up here. So I did my two prompts. I did two prompts, I should say. Actually, I think I did three. I did colored pins, mm, junk mail, kitchen item, and I feel like I did something else. Yeah, okay, so junk mail right here. Oh, colored pins first. Okay, this was colored pins. So I just took this picture and I colored in, colored the picture with alcohol markers. Because the this is the closest I've got to colored pins other than I have a white gel pen. And junk mail was this um, envelope that I put adhesive craft paper on. And it has a pocket here and a journaling spot and a pocket here and no, I just secured that on there. That's it. So that's what I did with a junk mail envelope. And then for kitchen item, I had some paper from like, I don't know, some retailer. Could have been Amazon even. Um, that I had. And so... I glued these two pieces on that look like something from a kitchen, even though that, yeah, baking powder and this says food. So that appears to be something from a kitchen. And then I did some doodling to fill in the blank spots. Haven't done mark making yet. What was the other one I did? Hmm. What else did I do? Colored pens. 
junk mail kitchen item. That's all I did. Okay. So that catches up with that. This is going to be a great resource when it's done to go in into and looking for ideas. Then the last thing that I wanted to show you was my progress. Okay. Whoops, not that one. I have this. Okay, so I was working on this in the last video. I'm in a travel trailer, and I took this to my daughter's garage sale today in case I could get some junk journal chatter going on with folks. And um, so I cover my stuff up to keep it. Right now I'm using a binder clip to keep this closed. So... I don't remember what all I've done since the last video, but I've got my, I did a collage for the cover. I've got one signature in here that I decided to go ahead and stitch. I was just going to stitch here and here, but um, I lost my bravado to do that and change my mind. So I did go ahead and tear this in half like I'd mentioned I was going to. And then I took some of that envelope paper and made a spine so that I could have more room so that as my journal got chubby, these pages didn't come out past my cover. And I did a collage um, with a lot of texture. There is a lot of texture on here. Got some of my vintage paper on there. And then I just finished some of my tags. Well, didn't necessarily finish them, but I got them backed and I got a hole punched. So this one was just crying out for this punch on it. But um, we got the three-year-old an Easter basket and it had a ton of this paper in there and I was like score that's mine I'm taking that home with me it's going to be great paper for backing tags and then I got this one done and I thought this blue would look really pretty with the blues in this tag and still have a bunch more tags that need prepared Let's see, we've seen all this stuff. I took some stuff out and I created a new ephemera journal. Just looking to see if there's anything else that's different other than taking some stuff out. I got the stitching done, so I put this little piece in here. I haven't decided what to do with this little piece. Right now it's just hanging out and looking fun. Took a lot of stuff out so it wouldn't be so chubby. Then I cut these out. So on the printout, there was probably like three or four of these plus the directions. There's one that has directions on it. I just cut that shorter. So 
That yellow bow doesn't bother me quite as much now. So that sits a little bit better now. Then I made this one. And I can't remember what inspired this other than the fact that this was sitting on my desk so I went for it this one has some um, crinkled ribbon with one of these closures from a retired hodgepodge set from Stampin Up and then I just cut out a circle of very vanilla and inked it up real good got just a little cluster here with some cheesecloth a napkin um some paper from taperology and then this piece of ephemera from probably the journal basics i think here's more of that napkin and then a bunch more of ephemera from different kits. This is from my stash, Taperology, but the rest of this is Amanda's ephemera. I love these books. And look what a cute pocket they make. This is one of my um, altered playing cards, and I love to free stitch because I don't sew very good so it's like this is how it's supposed to look so it's perfect and then this is just some ephemera from taperology every time I look at it I can't tell if it's upside down every time I look at it I go oh that's the way it's okay here's some numbers this is the way it's supposed to go. And I have some pockets, sorry. Oh, it's been a long day. And I took some of the um, ephemera that I printed out on cardstock. <clears throat> put a tag on it. And backed it with some paper that came in some package. I don't remember. Did that to both of these. Back this one with some of my lading paper. I call this lading paper because I don't know what else to call it. It's like um, it's like something that a mechanic would fill out. It says of sewer gas is strong. Check again. So something the the maintenance person had to do. Hi, needed call him at plant. It'd be cool if it had a date on it. All right, so I'm gonna put this back in here, and I put tabs on both so that they would be easy to pull out from the recesses of this page. Look at all this pretty stuff. This is a Tim Holtz stamp. I bought one Tim Holtz stamp set. Now, all of my stamp sets, except for three, and the other two may be gone by now, are stamping up. And, you know, I've been using this stamp set, and for one thing, it kind of stinks. It has the rubber smell. Bothers me. And it's, it's not as sticky. The side that you put on an acrylic block or even to store so that the, the um, stamps don't fall all over the place. Well, I didn't like that big plastic thing that it came in. It's still here, but I cut it down so that I could put it in here because I needed two layers for everything to fit in my empty Stampin' Up! stamp set case. But they don't always stick. So like this one is free falling because I keep laying it down and it won't stick. 
So that's something. Um, they they stamp pretty good. I'm happy with how they stamp. But, and, and I love the images. I mean, the reason I bought this is because Stampin' Up! hasn't come out with these kind of images for a couple of catalogs. Like, never this much. Never this much. This variety. I mean, it's been maybe this one and this one, something like it, you know, in one catalog, blah, blah, blah. So that's why I bought this, because I wanted a lot of these. I wanted to be able to, like, maybe make airmail envelope type things. Anyways, I'm happy with the way it stamps. But other than that, I mean, these stamps are as it's... Mm, I don't know if they're as expensive as Stampin' Up! because there's two layers of stamps in here. So while I might spend 20 bucks for a Stampin' Up! set and 20 bucks for this, there's a ton of stamps in this. But the smell of the stamp and trying to store them is a challenge. So this is mine. I made that and this is all Amanda's these are my stickers from washi tape company this is my vintage paper this is a hidden paper clip that I made with um, probably the vintage sewing or something paper oh this is what I wanted to show this is something that I just did, and I was so tickled with how it came out. This is an altered paper clip clipboard. So, it has, on this side, it has pages that I decoed, and they're held in with the paper clip, the hidden paper. And so then I embellished it. I have a little cluster down here and something going on up here to make it look nice. And then when we turn it over, voila, we have a little pocket on the back for some stuff. And then there is also this here. Now, I wouldn't do that because technically this is designed so that you put your ephemera in the back pocket and then you've got a page just looking for a page okay let's use let's use this cardstock here um, that might be too thick so we'll just open it up so then you this is designed to put it on a page and let it hang nicely in your journal like that so I don't have an open page for this in here, so I just put it in my, um, I think I tried to put it in one of my belly bands, but yeah, it was messing it up too bad. So I just have it laying in here, I think. So there's two belly bands and some ephemera, journal card. In a side pocket. We went through all this stuff. This is some of the stuff I took out of the other ephemera journal. So I just took some of this stuff out and loaded some pockets with it and then used my hidden paper clip to hold this little envelope on there. This is one of my hidden paper clips made with corrugated cardboard in um, a cluster and then it's got a little bulb pin on it for a charm if I decide to do that this is another hidden paper clip with um, Tracy Fox just came out with this hmm, probably about a week or two ago. And I did do some of them with Amanda's paper, 
but I couldn't find them. But I love these. I love these hidden paper clips. They're super cool. It's a side pocket. No, is that a belly band? It's a belly band. Just a little cluster. I love this picture. It reminds me of a painting that my grandmother did for me that represented me and my first daughter when she was little. And it was a picture of a lady reaching up. But the lady was reaching up to an apple tree. And um, when I was younger, I had some problems with a roommate. And so I had to leave real quick because her husband was... Um, actually ex-boyfriend I think is what he was was very aggressive and they were bringing drunk guys over to the apartment with my little girl there and yeah it was it was bad so I was in a rush to get out and somehow that painting got misplaced makes me so sad very 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 sad um because of course my grandma's deceased now and it was just, it was a beautiful, beautiful painting. So here's a couple envelopes with, um, and the thing is she had tremors like I do. And it was so fun to watch her. Okay, she's right-handed. So she would paint holding her arm and then just painting. It was beautiful. She was a very determined lady. So then on the back, I have some of this trim, and um, I had decided to bind this with, I always call this mito string, but I might be wrong. If anybody knows a more correct term for this string, I'd love it if you put it in the comments. And then I have this trim, and I was trying to determine, you know, I didn't want to do a wraparound tie because I've got this right here. And so, and I was like, oh, but I have that trim there. How am I going to do this? So I went ahead and put this on and then I stapled this and I glued the top down a little bit to hide the staple. So, you know, this isn't real bulky and real, you know, this stuff isn't, um, impeaching on each other. I don't think that's the word I want. Impending, impeding, I don't know. I hope you know which word I want. So what did I do? Cause this wasn't sticking out that far before. Okay, push that in a little bit more. And then we just stick this through here. And it's just long enough to tie a decent bow. Whoops. Yeah, so I've done a lot. I didn't have time to do videos, so I'm sorry it took me a long time to catch up with everything that I've been doing, but I thought it was a lot of fun stuff that I've been doing. So I wanted to go over it. I did make um, uh, some more altered playing cards because at the time I couldn't find the altered playing cards that I had previously made. So I did some more and I got some napkins from that order that I um, got from overseas. And I like the napkins that she sent because they're the ones that have two layers. Whereas the ones that I got at the thrift store the other day were one layer and these are a couple of the ones that I just made and of course I did my free stitch because I like it and I like this these napkins because they're thinner 
and you can see what's underneath a lot easier it's upside down because well no it's not the queen goes either way yeah so this is daffodils my husband loves daffodils isn't that pretty? Okay. Now the tickle is building, so I better go before I start hacking. But um, I hope you enjoyed what I shared with you. And um, I will try and get over what I think is allergies so that my throat doesn't sound scratchy and I don't have to worry about coughing while I'm doing a video. I'm taking thistle or nettle. I always call it thistle. But when I remember, I take this nettle and I think that this is helping. So I'm pretty sure it is allergies um, that, you know, just that time of year, the timing just ended up when I start getting over being sick then allergies start kicking in. So if you have problems with net allergies, I highly recommend that you try nettle. So that's my public service announcement for today and the end of my video. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day and that I will see you in the next video. And in the meantime, if you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you subscribed. If I get one more subscriber, I'll have 150. So that's kind of a milestone. And I always love it when I see likes and even more so comments so that I can chat back at you. So what are we going to do for the screenshot on this one? Let's do this. Screenshot. Boom. We're done.